All right, it's time for a personality test. Keep track of your points and check your results at the end of the test. 1. Do you like playing tricks on people? A. Yes, but only my close friends. They know I don't mean it. B. Everyone, all the time. C. Never. I'm afraid to hurt their feelings. D. Only if they play tricks on me. If you picked option A, you just earned 20 points. If you went with B, add 40 points to your basket. Those who chose C earned 10 points, and D is worth 30 points. 2. Which of these animals do you associate yourself with? A. Panther. I'm also posh, fast, and can always protect myself. B. Cute puppy. I wouldn't survive a day without my family. C. Kangaroo. I'm one of a kind, and you can't approach me easily. D. Chameleon. I can fit into any surroundings. All panthers out there get 20 points. Puppies at heart can add 10 points to their score. Kangaroos scored 30, and chameleons get 40 points. 3. If you turned into a superhero, what would you do first? A. Save the world. B. Travel the world. Being a superhero involves flying, right? C. Meet my favorite celebrity. D. Use my superpowers to produce as much money as I've always wanted. Option A brings you 30 points, B is worth 20, C is worth 10 points, and D gives you 40 points. 4. It's your birthday, and your friends surprise you with your dream car. How long will you be happy about it? A. A week, perhaps, until the joy fades away. B. Forever, it's the gift of a lifetime. C. It's no big deal, it takes way more than that to make me happy. D. I won't accept it. It's too much, and they know it. If you picked A, add 20 points to your score. If you went with B, it's worth 10 points. C brings you 40 points, and D, 30 points. 5. What's your favorite kind of weather? A. Beach weather. Sunshine, no clouds, and heat. B. I love snow. Playing outside or staying at home on a snowy day makes me happy. C. Rainy weather. The sound of it helps me calm down. D. Extreme weather. Thunderstorms, tornadoes, sandstorms. They make life more exciting. If you prefer sunshine, add 20 points to your basket. Snow fans earn 10 points. Rain fans get 40 points. And those who love extreme weather earn 30 points. 6. What movie would you choose to star in? A. Drama. I know how to play it because, well, I live it. B. Comedy. My sense of humor and irony will help. C. A superhero movie. I even know what my superhero costume will look like. D. I want to star in a detective movie and solve mysteries. Option A brings you 20 points, B is worth 10 points, C brings you 30 points, and D is worth 40 points. 7. How do you feel before an important event? A. Nervous and scared. I don't want to let anyone down. B. Excited. I love to test myself in triumph. C. Calm and focused. That's what helps me always win. D. Useless. I always feel like others are putting more in it. If option A is your choice, you get 10 points. Would you rather go with B? Well, that's worth 30 points. C brings you 40 points, and D is worth 20 points. 8. What activity would you like to exclude from your routine for good? A. Washing, drying, and brushing my hair. It's a waste of time. B. Having to pick my outfits. Let a robot do it for me. C. Cooking. It's definitely not my thing. D. Cleaning. 
things turn into a mess again too soon. If option A sounds like the way to go, give yourself 10 points. If B is your choice, you just scored 30 points. In case you went with C, add 40 points to your basket. And finally, D brings you 20 points. 9. Which sense do you rely on the most? A. Smell. I could create my own perfumes. B. Hearing. I can hear someone whisper across the street. C. Sight. They say I have eyes on my back. D. Taste. It has never let me down. If you went for sense of smell, you get 40 points. Those who trust their hearing get 10 points. If you have an eagle eye, award yourself with 20 points. And your sense of taste brings you 30 points. 10. You're arranging a first date with someone you really like. What's it gonna be? A. I'll rent a movie theater or a planetarium just for the two of us. B. I'll cook some fancy food and learn to play some musical instrument. C. I'll take them to an escape room and let them show how smart and brave they are. D. Huh, I don't arrange dates. Others try their best to impress me. Option A brings you 10 points. B gives you 30 points. Option C is worth 20 points. If you choose option D, here are your 40 points. 11. What do you do when you're angry? A. Ignore everything and everyone. I need some time to cool down. B. Read my favorite book or listen to some music. C. Cry my heart out. It helps me restart my system. D. Think it over. I gotta understand what made me so angry and how to avoid it. Option A adds 40 points to your basket. Option B gives you 30 points. C is worth 10 points, and D is worth 20 points. 12. Your friend's having a housewarming party. What do you bring to it? A. Some food or something else practical will do. B. I'll write a poem or make a fun collage and frame it to make it memorable. C. I'll just ask them what they need for the new house. D. Hmm, eh, nothing. My presence is the best gift. In case you chose option A, give yourself 10 points. B adds 30 points to your score. C is worth 20, and D is a 40-point option. 13. What time do you usually go to bed? A. 10 p.m. Well, 11 p.m. at the latest. I keep it healthy. B. 2 a.m. or so. And then I wake up around 2 p.m. C. What sleep? I never get any. D. 8 p.m. I need my beauty sleep. Healthy sleepers get 40 points. Night owls get 30 points. Those who never sleep win 20 points. And those who go to bed early get 10 points. 14. Which of the following sounds like the absolute worst idea to you? A. Never leaving my hometown for the rest of my life. B doing all the work and watching others getting promoted. C. Have someone else pick my hairstyle for me. I just can't pick my hairstyle. D. Never knowing my schedule. I can't live without a good plan. Those who went with option A get 30 points. Option B is worth 40 points. C brings you 20 points and D is worth 10 points. 15. Pick a color combination you'd never get tired of wearing. A. Black and white. I'm classy. B. Gray and pink. Official with a playful twist. C. Orange, purple, and emerald with a sparkle of blue. I dress brightly. D. Stripes, polka dots, paisley. (laughs) It's not about colors, it's about patterns. In case you chose option A, add 40 points to your score. B brings you 10 points, C brings you 30 points, and D is worth 20 points. 
All right, it's time to sum up your points. If you ended up with 150 to 230 points, your hidden superpower is invisibility. You can always disappear from an event you don't like smoothly. If you don't want anyone to notice you at a lecture or business meeting, they never will. Did you get 240 to 330 points? Congrats! You have the superpower of flying. You're doing things way faster than other people. Sometimes they ask you to share your secret of being here and there at the same time. You fly from place to place and are never late. You're always the first to try out a new trend or visit a new place. In case you scored 340 to 420 points, you're a super brain. You're one of the smartest people around. You can figure out the solution to any problem in a matter of seconds. When life gets too easy, your brain gets bored. You have an excellent sense of humor and irony. You like to plan things, and your plan always works out. Those who got 430 to 510 points, you have the superpower of reading minds. You have a lot of friends, and you make new ones easily. You always feel when something's wrong with them, and you know exactly how to help. You can also make others change their mind if it's in your interest. And if your final score is 520 points or more, you're a money magnet. You never run out of it. The second you realize that you could use some more cash, you find opportunities to make it float your way. You know how to save and how to spend money. I scored 410, by the way. Will you be successful in life? Maybe. Actually, there's no easy path to success, and only a select few have what it takes to make it to the top. To find out whether or not you'll be among these fortunate ones, just click on that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to join the bright side of life. And let's get into it. For today's test, you'll have 10 questions. All you have to do is decide whether A, B, or C fits you best. Be sure to keep track of your answer choices so that you can find out your results at the end. So grab a pen and a piece of paper, and let's take a look at the first question. Question number one. What time do you usually wake up? A. I'm an early bird, so definitely before 8 a.m. B. I'm somewhere between 8 a.m. and noon. C. I'm a night owl for sure, so my morning begins after 12 p.m. Question number two. Are you a confident person? A. Yeah, most of the time I'm pretty confident in myself and my abilities. B. I have difficulties just like everybody else, so it can change depending on the day. C. I'm self-conscious and awkward, but I'm working on finding harmony within myself. Question number three. What's your main goal in life? A. I want to be independent, strong, and the best at what I do. B. I'm very family-oriented. I want to have a big house and lots of kids. C. I think happiness and a no-regrets attitude is what we should all strive for. I want to live my life to the fullest and enjoy every second of it. Question number 4. Are you a team player? A. Sure! Behind every successful person, there's a dream team that helped them get there, right? B. Hmm, doesn't matter to me. I can work great both by myself and with others. C. Nope. I like to do things my own way. Question number 5. What's your idea of a perfect day? A. Going to a master class, reading, or learning something new. B. Meeting up with friends over a cup of coffee and having long, meaningful talks. C. Staying in bed, eating, and binging on TV shows or movies. Question number 6. One of your best friends just told you that they got a huge promotion. How does it make you feel? A. Of course, I'm really happy. It's my best friend, and they worked so hard for this. Can't wait to celebrate this victory with them. B. 
Uh, I'm excited for them, sure. But deep down, I'm a tiny bit envious. I wish something like this happened to me. See? Well, good for them. But not going to lie, I'm super jealous. It should have been me. Question 7. You have a week to finish an especially important paper. What are you going to do? A. Get to work right away so that I can perfect every little detail. B. I'll put it off for a couple of days, but then pull myself together and get it done. C. Procrastinate is my middle name. I'm used to doing everything at the last minute. Question 8. What scares you the most? A. Losing control. B. Losing someone I love. C. Failure. Question number 9. You've been working around the clock on a huge project, trying to make it as perfect as it can be. But when you proudly show it to your boss, he harshly criticizes you, saying that you should completely change at least half of your work. What's your reaction? A. I'll listen carefully to every mistake he points out and try to do better. B. It'll certainly hurt my feelings, and I'll feel upset for the rest of the week, but I'll eventually get right back on the horse. C. What? All this effort for nothing? I'm definitely going to be ticked off. Question 10. Congrats! You've just won a million dollars! What are you going to do with it? A. I'll invest the money in something I believe in, or use it to advance my career. B. I'll buy a house or a car and save the rest. C. Well, I'm off on vacay to have the best time ever. See ya! Alright, now it's time to count your A's, B's, and C's. Will you be successful in life? Let's check your results. If you chose mostly A's, congratulations! You're definitely going places, my friend! You have the brain, skills, and determination, and you aren't afraid of making mistakes and failing from time to time. Instead of beating yourself up, you learn and grow! Your motivation is a huge advantage, too, since you usually don't need any additional inspiration. You know what you want, and you're excited for the journey. The one thing that's missing from your life is just a little bit of relaxation. Now, don't get me wrong, working towards your dream is amazing, but you shouldn't forget about having fun and spending time with your loved ones, too. You have to learn to let your hair down every now and then and enjoy the moment. When you find this balance, your life will play out in brand new colors. If option B was your go-to for this test, you have every chance to be successful one day if you put your mind to it. You're smart, ambitious, sweet, and most people really enjoy your company. You have plenty of friends, and you love making new acquaintances. It helps that you can find common ground with about everyone. The only thing that's missing is a little bit of assertiveness. This doesn't mean you should just up and change your sweet nature, though, because being a good and understanding leader only gives you more points for being awesome. But you still have to learn to say no, be more demanding, and speak up for yourself. There are tons of obstacles on the way to true success, and you need to have inner strength and power to overcome all of them. If you work on this side of your personality, you'll be unstoppable. If you have mostly C's in your tally, then you've got a long way to success ahead of you. And it's not like you don't have the necessary qualities. You're independent, opinionated, and open-minded. But you do lack two of the most important skills, ambition and hard work. You usually prefer to go with the flow and expect things to work out for themselves. Remember, if you want to be successful, you have to be in charge of your own life take risks, at least calculated ones, and be willing to put your sweat and tears into it. Your dream won't come true while you're on the couch glued to your TV or phone screen, but it will get closer and closer if you take at least one step towards it every day. 
So don't waste all your amazing potential on unproductive activity. Start now, and one day, you'll certainly be on the top of your game. They say that women spend an average of 600 minutes on a mobile phone every day, compared to 459 minutes for men, according to a study. This time is usually spent on work-related tasks, like sending emails, as well as social media surfing. However, this is not just about the numbers. In fact, phone usage can reveal a lot about your personality. Constant phone checker. Being constantly dependent on your phone can make you more impulsive and easily distracted in other areas of life. According to studies, people too attached to their phones may become more emotional compared to those who can stay away from their phones an entire day and keep a nearly full battery. So, if you want to become more focused and calm, try limiting the number of phone checks during the day and not exceeding this limit no matter what. And of course, don't forget to reward yourself at the end of the day for your own patience and discipline. Bubble bath, a delicious dinner, a night walk with your special one. Choose what really motivates you. The ascetic user. Cell phone owners who don't use their phones that much and ignore technological capabilities such as cameras, payment, access to social media, and so on. If it's all about you, congratulations! According to studies, not being tied to your phone is a nice place to be because such people feel more relaxed, satisfied with their lives in general, and tend to have higher self-esteem. The phone drowner. Some people can grab their phones just to answer one single text message and get stuck on social networks for long hours, forgetting about other things. If your screen time makes you blush, perhaps it's time to limit your phone use. Researchers found out that cutting the phone usage duration and frequency may help raise the level of optimism and become more productive. The midnight user. People who frequently fall asleep hugging their phones raise the risk of waking up on the wrong side of the bed. The blue light emitted by cell phone screens restrains the production of the key sleep hormone melatonin. So, falling asleep becomes an even more difficult task, as well as waking up the next day and feeling energized. As for the opposite, people with a higher sense of duty usually stop using their phones before midnight. This is wise, because sleep loss affects our mood greatly. It's usually recommended to avoid looking at bright screens two or three hours before bed. The full battery user. This behavior is a sign of high discipline and leadership skills. Conscientious people don't like when a battery is low. So if you prefer your battery properly charged, perhaps it's a sign to call upon your leadership skills and reconsider your career. The excessive caller. Making and receiving too many calls? Study shows that extroverted people make and get more irregular calls and text messages during the day. And this also applies to nighttime. Of course, the modern age of technology is just a paradise for extroverts who can now connect with friends all over the world. Just make sure you don't forget to sleep, eat, and hug your loved ones sometimes. The avoider of calls. On the contrary, more introverted people tend to make fewer phone calls than others. This may be caused by shyness and few social contacts or simply the willingness to focus on one task at a time. Besides, many people have developed a telephobia, the fear of making and receiving calls. A person with such a disorder has anxiety when someone calls and struggles with receiving any calls. If you notice such symptoms in yourself or your friends, know that you're not alone. It's pretty common. Recent research of UK office workers revealed that 76% of millennials and 40% of baby boomers experience anxiety-induced thoughts when they hear the phone ring. So it's good to have so many alternative methods of communication. The round-the-clock user. Speaking of phobias, there's an opposite disorder when people develop anxiety caused by not having a working mobile phone. It's called nomophobia, and it's also pretty common. More than a half of polled adults tend to feel uncomfortable when they lose their cell phone, run out of battery or credit, or have no network coverage. So, if switching your phone to airplane mode makes you panic, it makes sense to remind yourself that just 100 years ago, people lived without cell phones and still managed to survive and evolve. The Phone Breakers Surely everyone knows at least one person who constantly breaks and loses their phone. Such people tend to be more impulsive, rushing, and multitasking than others. But it turns out that this behavior is also pretty common. 
the average American drops their phone on the ground four times every week. Over a third of polled people also confess that they drop it even more often than that. Statistics show that people usually damage their phones at home, while cooking in the kitchen, watching movies, or even in the bathroom. If you want to reduce the risk of damaging your phone, use it with both hands, especially while taking pictures or typing messages. You can also use a reliable screen protector and stick a phone ring holder to the back of your device. And of course, keep it in a secure place when you're not using it, in those rare moments. The faithful user. You also probably know someone with opposite behavior, a person who uses the same phone for decades. The top three reasons why people go and buy a new phone are breaking down of current device, battery life decrease, and simply the desire to purchase a new model. But in faithful users' hands, the cell phone magically becomes an unbreakable totem that accompanies them for years and even decades. This type tends to stay in a comfort zone and observe the world from the outside, appreciating small things in life. The ringtone person. These guys despise the basic ringtones and strive to customize their phones with special music for each and every contact and occasion. Only about 15 years ago, the only way to get custom ringtones was by purchasing them from a service provider. But luckily, today you can create and load your own ringtone for free. On the one hand, using ringtones can make your friends laugh and dance, but on the other, it can be pretty annoying for some people. In any case, this characterizes such a user as a bright and extraordinary personality capable of resisting public opinion. The loudspeaker. This refers to people who always shout into the phone and attract everyone's attention. When it comes to phone calls, they seem to forget all the rules of etiquette. It would be useful for such users to visit the Tokyo subway one day. In Japan, it's considered extremely bad manners to talk on your cell phone on trains and subways. Of course, they will not write a monetary fine, but they can issue a warning for such behavior. The fashionable user. Take a look at your phone. Does it look like a colorful holiday tree or as a basic piece of glass and metal? Customizing your phone case, adding accessories, and changing wallpaper regularly characterizes artistic personalities sensitive to beauty and wanting every aspect of life to be stylish. Maybe this is why the mobile phone decoration market has become a huge multi-billion dollar industry. The full storage user. If your phone memory is permanently depleted, this may indicate you're a very open-minded person who doesn't care too much about the future. You probably tend to avoid boring routines and delay tasks. But at the same time, you may be a talented creator. So take a closer look at your artistic skills. As for the memory, mobile producers most likely will very soon invent a gadget able to store your entire life. On the contrary, regular cleaning of your storage from music, photos, and videos can be a sign that you're good at strategic decisions and long-term planning. So, perhaps it's time to apply those skills to build the life of your dreams. The no-phone user. This type covers people who live without phones. Do they even exist? Yep. About 1 billion people across the world still don't own any mobile phone. And a third of the world's population is unable to access the internet. There are exactly 5.13 billion people in the world who own mobile devices, which is around 66% of the world's population and only 35% own smartphones. So if you own one, you're in a lucky minority. Hey, quick question. What image do you have set as your phone background? Is it your own selfie? It might seem like such people focus on themselves and their looks only, but in reality, they're just super self-confident, decisive, and unstoppable. The only thing that can stop them is not enough likes on their social media. If your wallpaper is decorated with your favorite actor, musician, TikToker, YouTuber, or some other celebrity photo, you must have incredible imagination. You can even imagine meeting someone you'll probably never actually meet. A default wallpaper means this person is easygoing and too busy with everyday life to bother with such insignificant things. Or this person just bought the smartphone and hasn't gotten around to changing the background abstract image in the background means you're a great thinker. You have extraordinary logical skills and you tend to overanalyze things. 
But hey, people always follow your advice. Yeah, even if nobody asked for it. The people who have their pet pick as a screensaver want everyone to know how adorable their fur baby is. I'm willing to bet you have hardly any other images in your camera roll. A picture from some crazy party you were at years ago means you did something super embarrassing there. And that's why nobody's invited you to any other party since. Okay, fine. Or maybe you're a bit nostalgic and tend to live in the past. People who have a fancy car for their background rarely open up their hearts. But if you become friends with such a person, they'll always be loyal to you. Or they just really wish they had that car, am I right? If Da Vinci had had a smartphone, he would have kept an Italian sunset as his wallpaper. A screensaver with sunsets gives away true artists. Nope, paint by numbers kits won't make you the second Da Vinci. So please, change the wallpaper. If somebody keeps their vacation photo as a wallpaper, they just want to flex about the cool destination they've been to recently. If the photo is old, it means you're way past due for a vacay. People who want to appear smarter than they are usually go for a wallpaper with a philosophical quote. Please, don't tell me anybody actually uses their phone background to guide them in life. If someone's lock screen photo is a piece of art, it means they're an articulate person with impressive deduction skills. Shout out to all the Sherlock's watching! If you have flowers as your wallpaper, spontaneous is your middle name. Grab a last minute flight and spend an unforgettable week in LA instead of working. Why not? You're the life of the party and everyone likes you for that. Maybe except for your boss. Anyone who keeps a pic with a cup of coffee as their wallpaper has an aesthetic view of life. They're never in a hurry, enjoy every second of this life. Plan a meeting with them and don't be surprised if they're 20 minutes late, at least. People who have space and stars as their wallpaper think they have incredible intuition and psychic powers. Those people will find money in a jacket they haven't worn for a while and believe it was serendipity. Or maybe they just need some space in their life. 